everybody. Yes, and welcome back to a very special podcast. This is the podcast in which we talk about all your favorite TV series from yesteryear. Yes, girls. And then we discuss them over a glass of wine. And I'm, yes, I'm Patrick M. Dunn. Perhaps you know me from like the previous 119-ish episodes, I think. I was trying to keep track, but I keep forgetting. And who do I have the pleasure of being with here tonight? Is it, uh, is it Kat Halstead, the author? The accomplished author? It is Kat Halstead, the author. Yes, the author. It'd be really weird if it wasn't me. You guys, if it wasn't me, he's got me hidden in a basement somewhere. Yes. Or mm-hmm. worse yet, the imposters came and found me. Yeah, uh, I cloned you. I cloned you, uh, like you Dolly the Sheep and Reva from uh, Guided Light. Reva. <laughs> And uh, you, you're not real. Like, you're just fake. <laughs> I'm fake. Regardless. I'm the fake Cat Halstead. I'm sure that's how the British Cat Halstead feels. I'm the fake one. Yeah, the fake cat. <laughs> Meow. We are creeping back into Halloween. This is our first edition of uh, 28 Tune. Here comes the booze. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I love Here Comes the Booze. I have a ghost light in front of me. I have, like, six candles burning right now. Like, they're fall scents. And, of course, I have a huge bucket of candy next to me in a, like, trick-or-treat pail that is shaped like a ghost. Are you ready for a hot scoop? A hot scoop. A Halloween hot scoop? Yes. In East Coast time, it is now officially October 1st. The clock just passed midnight, so ooga. Ooh, it's still September here in Colorado. (laughs) Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe the the clock will dial October first. Mountain, mountain time. Is that is that uh where you dwell? Yes, All mountain right. time. All right, that's where I dwell. All right, so if you are new to the podcast, if this is your first like time ever listening to us, or you know you started listening to us a couple of months ago, and this is your first Halloween season with us. Uh, we go all out every Halloween. We go nuts. We go balls to the wall. Nuts to butts. It just sort of happened the first year, and it gets crazier each year. Yeah. So, uh, like, we literally started the podcast in, like, late September. And then, like, two episodes later, it was Halloween, and we just fucking went bonkers. Mm-hmm. And every year, like, it gets a little more bonkier. It really does. And this is actually, we have decided, we have been doing a tradition each year of the podcast. This is our last time doing this series for Here Comes the Booze. It's a little sad at the same time. Yeah, it's somber. Um, we've been doing this. Uh, we're now on the fifth episode, Halloween episode of the show. Yes. And um, we picked a good one. I think we're going to go out with a bang. <laughs> yes, I think uh, we debated. And I think this is the best one to leave you with for this part. But we'll start a new tradition this season as well. Yeah, we're going to break into new traditions. <laughs> the new normal. <laughs> Ooga. All right. So the new normal. If I miss that show. <laughs> Shout out to... Uh, Ellen Birkin? Is that who was on that show? Yes. (laughs) Where are you? Come back, girl. (laughs) So we're doing tonight Halloween V, Roman numeral V, the Halloween V episode of Roseanne. Ooga. Yes. We're going back to Lanford. We're going live in Lanford. We're going to the lunchbox. Is this the first time we're going to the lunchbox? Uh, I believe so, yes. Where where are we in, like, the Roseanne chronology right now? So, uh, Darlene's at college, I gathered. Darlene's off at the writer's college type thing. And um, we are just, we are right before um, Becky and Mark come back, I believe. Yes, the Sarah Chuck edition. I was really hoping for a Sarah Chuck appearance, but we didn't get it tonight. So. Yes. I don't know, for some reason, I th- you told me there was, so I got like really excited and I kept waiting for her to show up and I don't know, girl never showed up. Yeah, I think I got confused a little, sorry. All right, well, we might have to do one more <laughs> just to see Sarah uh-huh. Chuck. So. We, do, we do love Sarah Chuck as Becky. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do like a Sarah Chuck episode of regular Roseanne. And just, <laughs> <laughs> and just have like a special like Sarah Chuck month here at the podcast. We'll do like <laughs> Roseanne. We'll do uh, Scrubs and uh, and her episodes of How I Met Your Mother and that other like random sitcom that she was on. And Rick and Morty. I forgot she does the, the voice of the mom on Rick and Morty. <laughs> so I don't know. Get ready, girls. Maybe this winter. <laughs> you never know. Sarah Chuck. Uh, Sarah Chuck September. How about next how about next uh next oh fall? i'm sure we'll have other plans next yeah fall. probably we'll forget about this we'll totally forget about it <laughs> and then some random listener will be like you guys what happened to that sarah chalk september we're like what are you talking about i know we've been talking about doing like or i've been talking about doing gina davis month for like four years now and it hasn't yeah it's never yet. happening it's coming 
one of these days, you'll let, like I'll you'll wake up and I'll be like, you got you ready to talk about a hero, her Dustin Huffman movie, <laughs> and maybe a Commander in Chief and her like random like one season sitcom. Maybe. Oh my gosh! And The Exorcist. How did I, how could I forget about The Exorcist? <laughs> oh, Patrick. So uh, what's uh, sorry? We just like keep beating around the bush. What's going on, Lanford? Okay. Right now, what's going on, Lanford? See, because we're season six now. It's the ninety three, ninety four season. We're in sixth grade in real life, so. Okay, so this is the season. They've got the lunchbox open. Beth has sold her shares to Leon. So Roseanne's former boss from Rod Bell's is now her business partner. So it's Leon, Nancy, Roseanne, and Jackie. Ooh, yeah. All four own a quarter of the lunchbox. Yeah, they kind of like run this. They do the day-to-day operations. Yes, they're all equal partners. And then David is living in the basement. Becky and Mark are not back yet. Jackie is pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do allude to her uh, pregnancy in this episode. Oh, this is the same year that Roseanne had Luke and Laura on. Oh. Uh, and then later in the season, she had the hunks from One Life to Live. Yeah, and um, I believe, like, the episode before this one, or at least two before, was the stash from the past episode, the one where uh, Roseanne and Jackie find a uh, pot. <laughs> yes, they get high. Uh, classic episode. Um, maybe we'll do that one day. <laughs> oh, that is a good episode. I love this yes. show still. I'm sorry. Call me problematic, but whatever. I don't care. Um, th- th- all right. <clears throat> to me, this season is like peak Roseanne to me because I this I, mm-hmm. I think this was actually like the first season I watched live. Maybe okay, I can see that. Like this is probably the first season where it was really your choice to watch. That's for sure. Before like like my parents dug it and I kind of was like in in and out, mm-hmm. and then I think it like finally entered syndication around this point or maybe like yeah, probably the previous season. It's right around that time. And it really like it really caught my attention. It really caught my attention. And I just I remember. Just this was the first year that I actually like Mm -hmm. watched, (laughs) like as it happened. I remember watching it unfold. I remember seeing uh, Sarah Chuck as Becky and going, "Wow, I like this new, (laughs) like this hot new Becky bursting onto the scene." Yeah, so this this is a really good season of Roseanne. It's got uh, some really great moments throughout, which is nice. All right, um, before we get into the landscape that was October twenty sixth, nineteen ninety three, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, so you previously aforementioned that. Jackie was pregnant this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know she has a boy, Andy. Was that his name? Yes. The the re- the Rosie revival is kind of like a blur to me. Mm-hmm. What happened to Jackie's boy, baby? He was never mentioned at all in that first season. I was befuddled, bewildered. I was like really confused. Like Jackie's like, oh, I'm all alone, and I was like expecting some comment. Like, well, you still have Andy. Yeah, because but I don't know what's up. I don't know what's up. I'm hoping. That on the Connors, they'll bring that up. All right. So, because they just barely mentioned where Jerry was. They were like, he's on an ice fishing boat in Alaska or something. All right. So, there was, I, I, I only very specifically remember one episode, the one where, um, J- um, Jackie and Roseanne's mom is like, they don't know what to do with her. So, like, they're going to have her, like, live with Jackie. And Jackie was just this, like, he, mm-hmm. she was like a spinster, like an alone, like a alone woman living in an apartment. And they were, like, worried that she was going to be, like, yeah. She was going to die and, like, no one would know for, like, months. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what's up with Andy. And that's, like, the, that was one of the few things that really kind of let me down about that revival is they didn't mention it. It's not like, he was somebody if if something had happened during the final season of the original run of Roseanne, I'm down to ignore that stuff. Oh yeah. Totally down. Like most of this stuff that no. We we saw Andy like the whole time. He exists. We saw Jackie breastfeeding him when she married Fred. Does the last season of Roseanne, like so, not like the, the original season, but like the revival season, is that like an alt reality, Roseanne? <laughs> I think it's just supposed to be Darlene Mary David and whatever happened after that was just like a dream Dan didn't die and yeah because you get that whole aspect of it too you get d- dead Dan but Dan's very much alive yeah there, there, there's a lot there's a lot and um, I, I don't think I'm gonna watch the Connors I'm just gonna throw that out there I just think I'm just gonna I'm, it's gonna be a hard pass for me I'm just gonna like you know what I'm just gonna live in the past just remember the show I'm gonna check it out because I love Laurie Metcalf. I mean, I love Laurie Metcalf too, but you know what? And I kind of want to see how they really do get rid of Roseanne. Uh, I don't even want to know. Don't even tell me. If, <laughs> if, don't tell me. <laughs> and also, I have a curiosity to find out whether or not they do a Halloween episode. If they do a Halloween episode, I'll be pissed. I I, I will write an angry letter to um to Sarah Gilbert. I'm like, no, no, girl, no. Like I'm already like, no, girl, no, to Sarah Gilbert. Uh, I don't know. Like I feel like her 
post Roseanne career has just been a downward spiral. Not a, like I don't know, like the few times I've watched the talk, she's been like my least favorite uh, talking head. On the, is that I guess what we call it? Talking head. It's like so, fuck the talk. But you can pretty much never get rid of her from the talk because she's like an actual creator of the talk. Just cancel the show, please. Just, just cancel the show already. It never should have been created in the first place. And I still miss my soap operas. Yeah. Um, bring back... Um, Screw you, less movies. Bring back Erica Kane. Is that her name? Erica Kane? That, that's ABC. We're talking CBS here. So that would be... Um, oh. As the World Turns got canceled and replaced with the talk. And Guide and Light. Guide and Light. Guide and Light got canceled and replaced with Let's Make a Deal. I don't know anything about As the World Turns, so let's just bring back Guide and Light so we can have, like, Reva's Clone Part 2. <laughs> I'm ready for that storyline. All right. <laughs> right. Enough of um, reminiscing on the past and potential future of the Connors. Let's let's go back in time, girl. Let's go back to October 26, 1993. It was a happier time. Roseanne was funny. She was full of vigor. Um, we all adored her. There was no Ambien. There was no Twitter. Yes. Um, she was free to say and do whatever she wanted. And no one would know about it. And I was a young child. And I was just... You know, hanging on to every word, hanging on to every word she had to say on the show, and I and I loved it. So let's let's go back to that world. Are you ready to talk about what was on mm -hmm. this night, October twenty sixth, nineteen ninety three? What what was happening this night in October nineteen ninety three? I think this is a very lit light up. I I remember I remember Tuesday nights in nineteen ninety three. I just remember this was like a good night for me. I would come home from school quickly, do my homework, get in my playtime, rush through dinner, mm -hmm. take my shower. And then I would watch like an hour of The Simpsons and Married Children in syndication. And then I would dip into this world. I would dip into the ABC lineup because I was totally watching ABC all night long. All night. All right. So we're going to start off with the alphabet. Are you ready? Do you have any guesses? Um, Tuesday night on an ABC, you got Roseanne Home Improvement. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you got Roseanne right. Um, but... All right. I don't know them. Uh, full House kicks the night off. Oh, Full House. <laughs> like, you're like naming shows that... Yeah, Full House, sorry. ...are on. Oh, you know what? I know what I was watching this night. All right. So, tonight, Full House. And it wasn't Full House. I don't know. I feel like you were watching Full House, because I want to tell you what, what else is on this. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Tonight's Full House. <laughs> you just remembered what else is on. Um, We'll get to it in a minute, but I remember going through this um very specific... Um, I, this was the time where like TiVo didn't exist. We didn't have Hulu. So, um, if something was on like a different channel at the same time, it was like a struggle mm -hmm. and you really had to like, you had to debate like, which, like you, you were like two face and Batman you had to like flip a coin. So tonight I was flipping a coin, uh, but full house, the episode high anxiety, speaking of high anxiety, uh, this is the one where Michelle wants Danny to stop treating her like a baby. So mm -hmm. she tries to act grown up. Mm -hmm. remember, this, remember this app? Okay. Yeah. This is a fun app. This is where we're starting to get like, uh, like Michelle's in like she's probably like five or six now, and she's doing like the the Stephanie the original Stephanie Tanner run. <laughs> so we're getting like the we're getting the recycling of those stories. Yeah, we're getting like Michelle doing all the Stephanie stuff and Stephanie doing all the DJ stuff and DJ entering like new ground. And the twins doing all the Michelle stuff. This is the point of the series. I think like it was starting to lose me. You know, I was like, you know what, this is all too familiar for me i don't know i don't know how i feel right now mm -hmm. i wanted to be acting i wanted to be treated like a grown-up didn't we go through this like four seasons ago with stephanie mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, I i feel like people caught on to the michelle years more be only because she like obviously the olsen twins became like a superstars yeah i want to say this is really around the time that the olsen girls really started to explode yeah like i because uh, this is around the time they had all their like little video cassettes starting and they would solve any time by any crime by dinner time and this is probably, they've already done to Grandmother's House We Go. This is probably around the same year they did the Halloween movie. I believe it was. So, yeah. I was doing the math in my head because I think to Grandmother's House We Go came out, like, winter, like, December of 92. Mm -hmm. so this is, like, almost a year later. So they're probably doing their Halloween vids. They have their direct-to-video vids coming out. Yeah. Um, I don't know, their little, like, little detective agency series, <laughs> whatever the fuck it was. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, they're they're gearing up for... To take over the world and yeah, so this is this is the start of the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen empire, which let's be real, as we discussed in our last episode, gets a little sketchy. Yes, um, and so. this is where um, Jody Sweeten was starting to dip down to the dark side of things. Uh, Candace Cameron was now probably dated, dated um, the Beret guy. What's his name? Jesse Beret. Val. Oh, Val. Val yeah, Val Beret. Uh, maybe she was getting ready to do some. Uh, 
some grown up made for TV movies. So I don't know. Wild times. Wild times. All right. Mm-hmm. You ready for ABC 830? Yeah, that's on at 830. I totally watched this because I love this show. It was only on for one year. And like I was surprised it was canceled because it was like a hit, like at least for me anyway. Uh, Phenom. Remember Phenom? What is it? Phenom. Oh, Phenom. Oh, Phenom. I'm saying it long. I'm sorry. I already called it Phenom. Yeah. Um, that was the tennis prodigy girl with the little sister and her pro was played by the guy who does those commercials for like gold and silver coins on on cable news networks. Yes. So this is a show about a 15-year-old Angela Doolin who has the potential to be a sports superstar mm-hmm. but worries about losing her normality and severing her family ties. Uh, Angela's father has deserted the family to rediscover his youth and date with uh, young women and leaving her mother, Diane, played by Judith Light. Yes, Judith Light, to raise her children. Oh, yes. I remember watching this because of Judith Light. Yeah, there's like an older brother and there's like a younger daughter and um, I don't know, like they're trying to keep it together and I don't know, it's wild. It was a wild show. And it actually, it was placed between Full House and Roseanne, and it did well in the ratings. It was like, it ranked in the top 20, and it maintained 95% of its Full House lead-in. However, mm-hmm. ABC still canceled the show for some reason, and they replaced it with like a, like a random like Steve Har- Harvey sitcom. That is so weird. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just remember this being like a big deal, and like everyone talking about this, and it just never... That is so odd. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Conspiracy Corner. We have to find out what happened to Phenom. Maybe we'll do like a um, an all-out investigation. Investigate. <laughs> okay, Veronica Mars on the case. Investigate yes. with Kat. So get ready for whatever happened to Phenom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe I'll do a special like YouTube series. You do your, you, <laughs> your right. YouTube series. I'll do mine. All right. Um, we're spinning off, guys. We're spinning off. All right. You ready for ABC 9 o'clock? I already <laughs> said it. Roseanne. <laughs> Roseanne! Yes. Uh, ABC 930, we both were totally watching this coach. Oh, yes. 100%. We're, we're deep in this world. And, uh, ABC 10 p.m. It's Tuesday night. That can only mean one thing. Dennis Franz's butt. NYPD Blue. So I was definitely not watching that. Uh, I probably like went to sleep at this time. It, it was, this was like around that time where it's like, all right, it's like ten o'clock. Maybe I'll like, get to watch like five minutes of like the ten o'clock news, and then I'll go to bed. Yeah, I'll like, get to see like the weather for tomorrow, and then I'll, like my mom will make me go to bed. Sometimes I could sneak a, something like on the black and white TV, but it wasn't NYPD Blue. Yeah, like the only time I was like ever allowed to stay up like late if there was like a fun like made for TV movie on that was like going to like eleven. Mm-hmm. Maybe there was like a Michael Jackson special on that ran late. <laughs> That was like the only time I ever stayed up late. Okay, well, it was on uh, CBS. Rescue 911, which was a fun show uh, hosted by uh, Willie Shatner, our, our guy, our boy toy. But I don't know. I was probably out of it by this point. I, I think my interest in the show was waning. Mm-hmm. It was um, it was on against my, my two faves, two of my faves. Actually, three of my faves. You'll, we'll get to NBC in a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. Rescue 911. Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl. We had to, we had to kiss you in the butt. We had to kiss you goodbye. We had to kiss you in the butt like Dennis Franz's butt. Ooh, God. Okay, it was on after Rescue 911. All right, we're going to the movies. CBS Night at the Movies. You ready for this? I love Night at the Movies. I miss those. All right, this was um, like a, a theatrical movie, Aaron, uh, tonight. Okay. And I'm excited about this one. I, I might have watched this, um, but it probably would have been edited for television because it's a rated R film. Uh, Stephen King's Misery. Ooh, God. Ooh. Yes, this is probably like its broadcast premiere. Yeah. Remember when that was like a yes. thing? Oh my god, what misery I remember watching like misery when I was like ten years old and it like mesmerized me <laughs> and I was like, wow, like this could happen. Like you can get kidnapped by like a fanatic. I did not watch misery for the... until I was in my thirties. <laughs> oh wow. I just remember being like, if I'm ever famous, I'm just not not gonna interact with my fans. I'm gonna stay far away. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they look like Kathy Bates. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you ready for Fox? Are you ready for a, a fun night at Fox? Yeah, it was on Fox. All right, so Fox has like a really weird schedule. Like, I'm baffled by this. Okay. So things start off pretty normal. Uh, Martin was on at 8. Um, I love the show. Okay. I, I feel like it was... Because Martin... I feel like Martin wasn't like a Tuesday night show, so like maybe they like just aired like reruns or something. Okay. Like encore eps. Yeah, that, that's what I gathered. Um, Fox at 8.30 was... Um, I vaguely remember the show, um, and from what I've read about it, it was like... A very well received critical darling, but it had low ratings. Um, do you ever do you remember a show called Bakersfield PD? No. This was like a like it, it was a half hour comedy. Okay. It it was shot with naturalistic lighting and without a laugh track. It was a comedy, but it was like about a police department in the city of Bakersfield, California. And I remember being very like like 
I don't know, like very Brooklyn nine nine Brooklyn nine ninety. <laughs> nine nine. Well, I was trying to say like nine nine dash y, like ninety nine ish. But I think I had to add e, and it sounded like I was saying the number. I'm sorry, sorry, girl. But this is a show was on for one season, low ratings. But um, it there was like a um, like a random cable channel like in the early two thousands that ran like a thing called Brilliant but canceled. Okay. And I remember the show was like on it. So that's the only reason why like why I kind of remember. Okay. And then all right, this is where the Fox Night gets weird. You ready for the weirdness of Fox? Okay. I'm ready. All right. Do you ever remember uh, America's Most Wanted being on a Tuesday night? I remember it being like, I felt like it was on all the time, though. Really? On Fox. I have no memory of this. I, I thought it was like a Sunday night thing. I like very specifically remember watching it on like Friday nights because I used to sleep over my friend's house on Friday nights and we'd always watch America's Most Wanted. So like just having to be on. on like... I mean, I don't think I actually ever watched America's Most Wanted. I definitely was not sleeping over my friend's house on a Sunday or a Tuesday. They tossed that on. Oh, I used to watch it all the time. And then... I remember it would lead into sightings, the show sightings on after. So I don't know. Maybe okay. like maybe like if they just needed to like fill holes. Yeah, people are always doing crime and on the run, so you'll always find a criminal somewhere. There's always somebody on the wanted list. Now, want to hear something even wilder about this night? Okay. Fox has a ten o'clock slot tonight. What? Yes, and this baffles me. It baffles me why the show was aired on Tuesday nights at ten o'clock. What? Do you have any guesses? It's a it's a sitcom. A very like a sitcom that we love. It's not very well remembered, but we've we've definitely talked about it on the podcast before. If you tell me it's Herman's head, uh, I'm gonna walk out of the room. Uh yes, it's Herman's head. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bye. Oh my god. <laughs> See ya. So why was this show on Tuesday night at ten o'clock on October twenty sixth, nineteen ninety three? I don't know. Does it say anything about the episode? I have the episode. I had the episode title, and it said it was new. And I was just, like, so confused that I just stopped at that point. So, I don't know. Like, this night of television is strange to me. I want to know why, like, Phenom was canceled. I want to know why Herman's Head was on at 10 o'clock. I'm so confused. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, if you know the answer to us, tweet us at Very Podcast and tell us why Herman's Head was on at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night. And damn it, now I really want to watch Herman's Head. It's hard to find. Like, we can, we can only find, like, clips. I know. So, I don't know. If anyone has, like, an old VHS of Herman's Head out there... Send us a, 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 a VCR and the, the VHS mm -hmm. of Herman's Head. And actually, you got to send us two VCRs. <laughs> and two VHSs. Yeah. Make a copy if you can still do that. that Let's how... boot like the hell out of this. If you have two VCRs, yeah, you can make a copy. Yeah. I do you remember like, how complicated it was to like copy a tape? It was like a process. <laughs> Dude, I remember I had to go like into my brother's bedroom, bring my VCR in, and set it up to try and make edits of... General Hospital. Yeah, but do you remember, like, it wasn't like you could, like, very easily, like, the way you can do it now, like, when you're making, like, a YouTube video, you can, like, go back, cut parts out. Like, you act, you actually had to, like, physically do work. It was, a, it was a process. Yeah. It was such a process. Kids today don't understand. And it wasn't like you could just add music or anything either. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was a way, but it was probably, like, you needed more equip that I didn't have. Yeah. I had a zero dollar budget. I'm like lucky I had two VCRs. Yeah. <laughs> you ready to uh, end the night off with NBC, the Peacock? Yes. All right. This is this is a wild night. So NBC, 8 p.m. This is, this is my dilemma. You ready for the dilemma? Do you have any guesses what the dilemma might have been this year? It's Saved by the Bell, the college years, and that's what I was watching instead of Full House. Yes, you're right. And you know what? I might have been watching Saved by the Bell, the college years. I, I don't know. Like I, I remember like just being like a struggle every week. Like, oh. Like I, hope I was 100% watching Stay by the Bell of College Years. This is like hot in the whole Lasky Kelly thing. Yes, we're in the final arch, final arch of uh, Zach and Kelly and Slater. I don't know. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> um, listen, listen to us talk about Stay by the Bell of College Years. We talked about it like two Thanksgivings ago. It was very, uh, yeah, very fun filled, drunken episode. <laughs> uh, we'll get into it there. We'll get into it there. All right. Have you ever. Have you ever seen the NBC uh, special? This was on eight thirty, the last Halloween. Um, possibly. I totally saw it, but it, I didn't see it this year because this like it aired like every year for a couple of years. So the last Halloween is a primetime Emmy Award winning live yeah. action animated Halloween television special produced by Hanna Barbera. Uh, it originally aired in nineteen ninety one, but I guess it was like so great that they kept airing it every year. So this is a story about four aliens. Uh, they have been sent to Earth from the planet Mars mm -hmm. in order to find a rare material known as Kubi, which is later revealed to be candy. And it was like an early form of CGI <laughs> was used to create the aliens. Yeah. So I don't know. Did you remember this? Um, I 
don't, but it's there's several copies on YouTube, so I know what I'm doing before bed tonight. Yeah, I feel like if you if you um just like looked at a still of it, you would like might recognize the characters and be like, oh, like maybe I didn't see it, but I definitely saw like commercials for it. Like I've definitely it's come up in lists of old specials. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I want to say like I feel like we talked about it, and I think we like vetoed it, but I don't know. Maybe yeah. that was just me in my head. <laughs> I don't know. It could have been. Who knows? Could have been. Okay. Okay, so it was last Halloween. What was on after that? The John Larroquette Show. Ooga. Okay, okay. We love us some John yeah. Larroquette. Yeah, we got to spend the night with John Larroquette. Ooh, fun times. Fun times in 93. Um, come back. Like, that's another hard show to find, too. I don't know. It just doesn't exist for some yeah. reason. I don't know. We'll, we'll find it. If if you have Herman's Head and John Larroquette on the same tape. You might be our new us. best friend. You ready to end the night? I get, we got two more things to get through, so we'll just... Okay, hurry, right. hurry. All right, this one's exciting. I don't know. I've never heard of the show, but I read the I read the description. I saw the the stars, and I was like, I would probably watch this. Do you remember the second half? The what? The second half. Hold on, you're frozen. Am I unfrozen yet? Now you're unfrozen. Do you remember the second half? The what? The second half. The second half? No. All right, this was an American sitcom that aired on NBC from 1993 to 1994, one season of Wonder. The series was executive produced and co-created by its star, John Mendoza. But do you want to know who co-starred in this? Who? Wayne Knight and Mindy Cohn from Facts of Life. Okay, yeah. No. Uh, this was this was about a divorced sports columnist for the Chicago Daily Post who has to deal with his ex-wife, weekend visits from his two daughters, and romance in the 90s. Okay. I mean, so, I classic know. 90s sitcom fair right there. Yeah, so I don't know. I, 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 I'm kind of intrigued by this. I don't know. I, I want to know more. <laughs> if you have this on tape, send it to us too. All right. Just listen, if you have old sitcoms on tape, just send them to us. Yeah, they, you just like, I don't know, you clean out your, like, your mom's attic one day. She's like moving. She's mo- going to be moving into like a smaller condo because she's downsizing. And you find like an old box in the attic and there's a bunch of tapes in there, a bunch of blank tapes. And you decide to like poke through them one day and you find like a bunch of fun old commercials, a bunch of fun old sitcoms. Uh, send them to us. Uh, just tweet us at Very Podcast. We'll give you one of our addresses. Or maybe a P.O. box to be so we don't get murdered. So we end up on um, like an episode of 48 Hours. <laughs> yeah, that is my biggest fear is ending up on an episode of 48 Hours. Yeah, the podcast murders. <laughs> hey, I just watched one about the dark web and that was scary. Oh, yeah. We don't. We definitely don't want to be part of the dark web. We want to be on the yeah, fun and web. Yeah, no. The darkest we get is like making like Heather Locklear jokes. And even that, those should be edited out. You ready to end the night? You ready to end the night? We're going to go out with a bang. Give it to me. Why don't, I don't watch this too often, but I do dip in every now and then. Dateline. Ooga. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Staple. A I, late I would, night staple. I might watch Dateline every once in a while when I was younger. Yeah. You know, like if a, an intriguing topic was being presented. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanted to like, I don't know, you had a fun, fun story there to share. Like maybe, um... Maybe they were going to do an episode about Michael Jackson for some reason. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, like it used to definitely be more variety in what they did stories. Now they're all like murder stories. Oh, yeah, because like I've, people love a good murder now. Like, But back in the day, you got like a little you got a little variety. It was fun. Like, you got to, yeah. like, sometimes you got to hear like hear about pop stars. I don't know, like maybe like what uh, Susan Day was up to lately. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I don't know. It was a jovial time in the 90s. We were innocent. We were innocent. Bill Clinton was president. <laughs> the, like, the only scandal was him getting his dick sucked by Monica Lewinsky. And that was still years away. But we were we were ramping up for it. We were slowly building towards that. The climax, yes. so to say. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I was definitely watching Saved by the Bell, The College Years that night, and then moving on to um, ABC. Oh, yeah, you were getting down with the alphabet. But, you know, I I had to be there for my Zach and Kelly. You know, I, I just had to. Yeah, I don't know. You know what, though? Like, after, like, the fun and excitement and the newness of, like, Saved by the Bell, College Years, like, wore off, like, it kind of, it lost me. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't really care for, like, the new characters as much. And I don't know, like, I, I wanted, like, Lisa back, and I wanted Jesse. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, like, the two female roommates, sweet mates or whatever, they were boring, and it just, it was just stupid. Yeah, didn't, I think we addressed that when we were talking about the, uh, when we did that last, like, two years ago. We, we were just saying, yeah. like, we, we, we weren't there. What was it, Leslie, was that her name? Yeah, Leslie and Alex. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Alex, I, like, I just remember being, like, Alex... Like, I couldn't tell if she was, like, a 19-year-old or, like, a 35-year-old woman. Like, <laughs> she could have been anywhere in between. Yeah, that's true. Because, like, I feel like the next thing I saw her in was playing, like, um... Super- Spider-Man's aunt. <laughs> no, it was somebody's wife in duets. Um, 
Is it Paul Giamatti? Yeah, Paul Giamatti's wife in duets. Yeah, I don't like the, like the. It was just like I couldn't tell. It, it just didn't work. Yeah, and then they had the um like the the RA, but like he also like he was like an old man, but he also went to school there. Yeah, that was just weird. Yeah, he was supposed to be like the Mr. Belden type, but he was like more. He was like a fun Belden, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? That's it was a horrible show. And now the theme song is stuck in my head, so thanks. We'll have to revisit again, though, because, I don't know, because we're horrible people. The edge of tomorrow. What is it? Standing at the edge of tomorrow or something. Today. Oh, yeah. Today. To- you know what? I remember I had, um, so my school, they would have, like, you remember, like, you would, like, cover your books with, like, book covers? Your textbooks? Yeah. Like, my school must have had, like, a partnership or something with, like, I don't know, like, NBC or something. I don't know. But we had, like... You can go to the library and get book covers. I remember they had Sailor the Bell of the College Year's book covers. And it was just like an ad. It was just like a big giant ad for the show. We yeah. just used brown paper grocery bags. Oh, I don't know. Like, you know what? I bet you like NBC or or like, I don't know. Some, someone must have like threw the school like money or something. And they were like, here you go. We'll give you free book covers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Promote our shows in, our, in, your, in your hallways. Have all your like students walk around and like talk about and draw like boobs on Alex. <laughs> On Alex's blouse. <laughs> oh my! You write, you can write your favorite band names on like Kelly's forehead. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Did you ever write your favorite band names on um, the book cover? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like I would like go to school and I write like Red Hot Chili Peppers and like. Yeah, we would always put like stupid stuff on our book covers. Like looking back, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, like that's how, that's like how you found your friends. Like like what they like wrote on their book covers. You're like, oh, like you like mm-hmm. Pearl Jam too? Like let's be friends. Let's like let's hang out Friday. Let's let's kind of. Oh, you have that Lisa Frank sticker? Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, can I sleep over your house and watch uh, America's Most Wanted this Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, we were such dorks. I think we should head over to Lanford, though. Let's get into it. Let's do a blow-by-blow yes. for a really fun episode of Roseanne. Real <gasps> fun. Like, I, I didn't want this episode to end. It like, is. I it was is. watching this last night, and I was just, it was like middle of the night. It was like 1 a.m. I was like giggling in bed, and I just wanted to like binge the whole season after this. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I just want to watch all of season six right now. Like I watched it this afternoon with my nephew after I rearranged my sitting room. I pulled off. I pulled up the Chromecast. Pulled up the Amazon Prime. Played the video. It was all good. Yeah, and like you know what's like really fun about this is we got like the Halloween prank is back again. Like because like we were. Yeah. Was it not in last year's or was it the year before it wasn't in? No, last year was the year where she depressed. Was it? Was um depressed and had the candy corn ghost visit her. Low key, like I didn't really care about that one. That one kind of sucked. The the only really good thing about that one is actually nothing. <laughs> yeah, so Oh, is that you can actually No, 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 I take that back because that's the one where we get um oh my god, I'm forgetting her name. Oh my god, um Lori Metcalf's daughter. Oh, um Oh my god. She's the mom on Young Sheldon. She's she plays young Jackie in that episode. Uh, Zoe Perry. <laughs> so okay, I'm like, it's Perry or Pete. I'm like, oh my god. And this this launched the infamous uh like your date pickup line. <laughs> Did you know? Actually, I'm gonna tell you. Why don't I think my greatest pickup line was? What? Hey, we just matched. So here's my number. So text me. <laughs> baby or something like that because oh. that's that's what i did when i met that's how i what i messaged to um big when we started dating oh yeah cat's current boyfriend all right yes well before you had that hot uh pickup line we have to talk about your your other hot pickup line the one that like it either angered people or like it made people chuckle um uh, and what was it yeah, like, there were people who were like, really, that is so cool. Or there were people who were like, what the fuck, bitch? Yeah, they were, like, calling you out. Like, hashtag me too. So, uh, I, th- I... Yeah, like, dude, chill out. Like, this is exactly why I use that line. All right, what is the line, Cat Hulse, of the author? And it was, uh, did you know that Lori Metcalf plays Sheldon's mom on The Big Bang Theory and her daughter plays Sheldon's mom on Young Sheldon? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Like I think oh we brought it up. We brought it up in that episode, and then like I think that's where we came up with the idea for like the pickup line. Like I, we like brainstormed. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "That's it. That's my pickup that's line." Um, and then I just went with it. I just love like the next three months of for like, months. I used that line. I just love like the next three months of screenshots that you sent me of like all the replies. <laughs> it. it was like I would like wake up in the morning and I have like seven screenshots of me from like seven different s- potential suitors. 
of them just being like, you fucking cunt, get out, get out, like, block. <laughs> yeah, like, people, like, some men got really angry about, like, that. Or, the, or they'd be like, why don't you tell me something important? I'm like, I'm just telling you, like, a ridiculously cool fact. But you had, like, you did get, like, a few, like... I'm like, breaking the ice. You did get, like, a few, like, uh, like, oh wow. Like, tell me more. Tell me more, Cat Hall said the author. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about yourself. That's how, um... The boy and I started talking. Ooh, the boy. Uh, does he still listen to the show? I don't know if he still listens. Oh. He has. The boy, if you still listen, tweet us at Very Podcast and let us know. And, I don't know, tell us a fun fact about yourself. I mean... Or not. Or not. We'll go on. Or not. <laughs> or just text okay. Kat and be like, yes, I still listen. Yeah, text Kat. Text her like a thumbs up. <laughs> Actually, don't text her a thumbs up because that, that's um, the signal for that you like my voices. Text her <laughs> the Dracula emoji. Yeah, I swear to God, if I get a Dracula emoji from him, I'm going to be like, what the fuck is this? Yes. Uh, text Kat the Dracula emoji if you still listen. And then Kat Halstead, <laughs> screenshot it to me the second you get it. I'll be like, what the hell is this from him? All right. All right. Let's... Uh, Let's go. Let's go to Lanford. Take us. Take us into this world. Let's go. Let's, okay. let's dive deep. So we are at the lunchbox. It is a beautiful fall day. It is October, and Roseanne and Jackie are at work, and they are setting up the Halloween decorations, and they bring in a fake dead body, because that's what you want to see at a restaurant. Yes, and Jackie like puts the dead body at like a table of four. Mm-hmm. And Roseanne loses her shit, and she's like, "Oh my god, you can't put that there." She's like, "You're like, you're wi- you're taking up space of like potential like family of four. You can't waste there. a four top. Yeah, <laughs> throw it over here, like at the height, like at the um, at like the breakfast bar. Like, yeah, it- at the at the counter. Yeah. It's one seat down. It's not like a table of four. Yeah, because like the joke was supposed to be like, "Oh my god, you can't bring that dead body in here. It'll like scare off customers." Yeah. It's like, no, it, like put it over here because we don't want like we want four people to seat there. <laughs> Yeah, okay. it, it's and they're like making fake fake vomit out of the loose meat, yes. and it's it's just ridiculous. Uh, my and fa- Leon comes in, oh. and oh. he's like, "What the hell?" My my favorite part as Roseanne is stabbing the dead guy to make him look more dead. Yeah, I was gonna say because uh, Roseanne looks at the dead body and she's like, "Oh my god, this doesn't look dead enough," mm-hmm. and she like pulls like an actual knife out of her like she I don't know, there just happens to be like a machete nearby for some reason mm-hmm. and she just stabs the fuck out of it like even more and she's like there that's better and leon's like oh it's come to this okay like barely phased really he walks in as she's stabbing like the the dead body mm-hmm. and he like like he's not surprised yeah <laughs> he's like oh roseanne's murdering somebody in like the business that we own equally that like Makes sense. Well, I... that's on brand. Whatever. I have a question. I have a question about Leon. Yes. What's his role at the lunchbox? I don't know. Like you don't really very often see. He, I think he does most of the paperwork and like the accounting and stuff. He's always wearing like a suit. Like, is he like the accountant? Is he like doing the bookkeeping? I think he ends up doing the bookkeeping and all that stuff. But yeah. Occasionally, he's got the apron on and he's out there, but he tries to act like he's the ma- owner, the owner manager, but he's really just like one of four partners. Oh, like like, like maybe he like he probably has like a business administration degree. Mm-hmm. He's taken a few classes down at like the local community college. He knows yeah. his stuff. He's like he's taking accounting one and two. He can balance a book. <laughs> so like, I don't know. He he feels like he's in charge, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I, I don't know, like. And, like, Roseanne, Jackie, and Nancy are, like, doing all the yeah. work. So they're, like, oh, like, they're just, like, mayor waitresses to me. They're, like, they're in the back fucking making burgers on the fucking grill, <laughs> on the grill line. They're the ones making the loose meat and all that. Yeah, I, I kind of get, like, a snootiness from Leon. Like, he just kind of thinks this whole thing is, like, this whole business is, like, beneath him. But it's probably a moneymaker. Like, it's got to do decently. Yeah, because... Like, they don't go under. Well, I mean, like, Lanford's, like, a blue-collar town... Um, mm-hmm. everyone, it's like that kind of town where everyone goes to lunch at like the same time. So this like, this place probably does like a killing between like 11 and one. Mm-hmm. And then it probably does great at like breakfast and they probably close up early. They probably close around like four o'clock. No, they don't, they don't do breakfast. Oh, they don't do, they, they just, they just. No, but they're open at night. Oh. So they probably do like a bit of a dinner. Oh, like, oh, like an early dinner kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, cause I always feel like, like Roseanne's like home in time, like for like actual dinner at the house. So I don't know. And 
My thought is Nancy probably takes the later shifts most nights. Oh, yeah, because she's probably out, like, drinking and stuff at night. Mm -hmm. Parading around town. So she just like I don't know closes up. Mm -hmm. and they, I don't know. Maybe they get like a like a like a teenager. She comes like in like the late afternoon, probably around like three after she's like done with school and her homework. She comes in and she helps out. She probably like sweeps the floor and stuff. Cause like you never see anybody else there working. You really don't. Yeah. Like the these three girls and sometimes Leon just like run the show. Unless Roseanne is punishing like DJ or Darlene or David. And I wouldn't even say punishing. Yeah, you don't see anybody. I else would just working. say she just drags them to work to do stuff. <laughs> And doesn't pay them. Yeah. Like, this is... All right. This is the year that, like, mm -hmm. David has, like, f fully moved into the house. And he's, like, technically a Connor now. If I were Roseanne, I would just fucking make him come every day and, like, do stuff. I think David might actually have a job. Oh. What does he do? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Like, I just... I, but... I feel like David just stays home and, like, draws horses all day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I, like, I can't picture... Like, he just doesn't seem like he could hold a job. Like, he just is... You know what? I can't work at this record store. It's too stressful. I need time to like to draw this fucking Black Beauty right now. <laughs> doing a doing a diorama on Black Beauty. What is the um? He probably works at like a bookstore for like a couple hours a week, and that's it. Oh, like those like not like like a used bookstore, like the ones that aren't really that busy. But like the owner needs somebody there for like a few hours so they can actually like go do stuff. Yeah, he's probably like in the back like putting stickers on books, <laughs> like mm -hmm. price tags on books. And, like, putting them on the shelves and stuff and, like, organizing them. Yeah, exactly. He's not a very, like, personable person. So, like, I can't, like, see him, like, dealing with the public all too well. Yeah. I, I just feel like if, I, like if I ever went to a store and I had to deal with, like, David, I'm just like, oh, God, like, fucking <laughs> Roseanne, where are you? Stab me seven times in the back right now. <laughs> Please. Please, girl. Mm -hmm. Take some Ambien and stab me seven times. Yes. And then say, and then, and then, and then blame it on the Ambien. So, yeah, Roseanne and... Jackie, you're just making this place ridiculously decorated for Halloween. Like, I'm sorry, there's barely any counter space for actual people to sit there and eat because they have so many decorations out. We've talked about this before in the past, like sitcoms, especially sitcoms, like in like 80s and 90s sitcoms, just have this very like unrealistic view of like stores and restaurants. Like whenever we see like a department store and it's like a sitcom, it's always like one like room. <laughs> yeah. Like, The Facts of Life did it, that Small Wonder episode we watched. Like, the mm -hmm. the department store was just, like, this room, like, the size of, like, my bedroom. And restaurants are always, like, just packed of, like, decorations. And this is, like, before the whole, like, Applebee's, TGI Fridays, Ruby Tuesdays, everything. Uncle Moe's. Like, the swag. Feed bin yeah, the swag. kind of thing. Like Uncle Moe's family feed bag? Is yeah. Is that what you're getting at? Hey, I'm Uncle Mo. Welcome to my family feed bag. <laughs> I got fucking burning fries on my forehead. Yeah, like, hi. We, we get a conversation between Roseanne, Nancy, and Jackie. And the, I guess they're planning to be, like, the Cleaver family from Leave it to Beaver for Halloween. But, like, a, the dead Cleaver, like, a dead version of them, I guess. I, I could... Yeah, they're going to do a group costume for the Lodge. Yeah, and I was kind of sad we didn't party. get to go to the Lodge this year either, too. I was like, oh. This, uh, last year was the last time we see the Lodge for oh. Halloween. Yeah, I know. R.I.P. The Lodge. Which is sad because I love the Halloween Lodge parties. So they're playing on like this group costume. They're all going to be the Cleavers. And I don't know. Um, Nancy just kind of like mm -hmm. makes this like side comment that she doesn't really think that Dan likes her that much. Roseanne and like Roseanne's shocked. She's like, what? Like Dan loves you. Like Dan adores you. He thinks the world of you. And Nancy's like, I don't know. It's just like the way he looks at me sometimes. Mm hmm. Just, uh, he, like, he never, like, he doesn't talk to me. Like, I'm in the room. It's like, I'm not even there. And if he does talk to me, it's very dismissive in nature. Can we be real? Like, why should Dan like Nancy? Like, she's his best friend's ex-wife. Best friend gets, like, sent away in reality because it was Tom Arnold and he was married for his aunt. But, you know, for Dan, like, the ex-wife is still here and he loses his best friend. Yeah, and like he, he, like he still technically hangs out with his best friend. I guess I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. or maybe they talk on the phone or something. I don't know. Who knows? And it's like he loaned his best friend for a boob job for her, and she's got like no boobs. Yeah, and so I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, and, and like you know what? Now that I was like thinking back, like there really isn't that many Dan and Nancy like interactions that I can recall. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like. Like, you know, she, they might be in the same room, but, like, I, I don't ever recall, like, seeing, like, specific... Yeah, Nancy's with Roseanne and Jackie, and Dan is with the guys. Yeah. And it's, it's like, you know what? 
Roseanne doesn't really care for Dan's friends either. So like, it's just, so, you know, it happens. Like you, you, you can be with somebody and you just don't like their friends. Yeah. But like, you... sometimes you love their friends, but sometimes they have friends who you just don't like. I feel like, it, like it's a... their best friend calls you a succubus or stupid stuff like that. And you're just like, really, that's the way you're going to, okay, that's how we're going to do this. Yeah. I, I feel like it's just like a thing. It's like, all right, you know, like they, they probably don't like each other, but they have like an unspoken mutual bond where they just never have to talk to each other. Like they can, they can be in the same room together. They don't have to like hang out and like mm -hmm. pretend to be friends, but you know, yeah. like they'll, they can keep up appearances. They can pretend they're friends, I guess. Yeah. They can pretend long enough. They can get through whatever event there is and it's okay. I, I feel like Dan was okay with that, but maybe Nancy wasn't. Maybe she's just insecure. Yeah. Like, I feel like Nancy expected more out of this friendship. So like, yes. Yeah. From so Dan. Yeah. yeah. So Roseanne's like shook. She's like, no, like there's no way Dan loves you. I'm going to go home and tell him he's going to like laugh his head off. And then he's going to come in tomorrow and give you a great big hug. And which is like kind of like a weird thing to promise. <laughs> like, let's be real. Yeah. It, it was really weird. Like, okay, Rosie. Yeah. Like, I know. Not sure you can keep that yeah, promise. Like just be like, no, like he likes you. Like we talk about you all. Like all she had to say was like, all right. He loves you. Like, he thinks you're great. Um, you talk about you all the time. He always speaks of you in high regard. And that's all she had to say. But instead, she, like, overpromises the world to her. So now, like, Nancy's expecting, like, him to come in and, I don't know, yeah. like, and give her a gift card to Applebee's or something. I don't know. And, like, flowers and a great... Like, play a prank on her because that's how these people show their affection is with a Halloween prank. Yes, which... I yeah, like, and I don't even think she even brought... Oh, yeah, does she say that this earlier or is this, does this come, like, later on? Say what? Like, the prank? I don't remember. Because I think, I think she goes home first, and then she kind of, like, it, she's, like... Mm -hmm. just, yeah, she goes home, and she tells Dan, and Dan's like, yeah, I don't like her. Yeah, it, no, but it's, like, the way... And she's like, well, you need to, like, make her think you do. It's it's brought up in, like, a weird way. So, like, she goes home, and she's like, making dinner, and she's just having, like, this, like, conversation with Dan, and they're just, like, joking about, like, how it's Halloween and stuff, and they're, like, they're playing little pranks on each other. And then she's just like, oh, like, Nancy said, like, this, like the funniest thing at work today. She thinks that you don't like her. And he's like, I don't. <laughs> and she's like, what? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't like her. I think she's obnoxious. She's fucking selfish. All she thinks about is herself. Like, she's just so self-centered. Like, I I only tolerate her because she's, like, your best friend. And Roseanne's, like, beside herself. She's like, oh, my God. Like, uh, I told, like, I overpromised. It's like the world to her like i said that you're gonna come in tomorrow you're gonna say that's ridiculous you're gonna give her a great big hug and he's like i'm not doing that <laughs> and she's like oh my god like like so now she goes back to work the next day yeah and i don't know it's it's like the first thing nancy says like so what did dan say and roseanne's like oh like uh funny thing is yeah he's gonna come in today and do a fun prank on you and she's like oh my god i can't wait like dan doing a prank on me like you guys are the king of pranks king and queen of pranks like i can't wait for this and she's like all right, I'll just yeah. act, like, super surprised when this happens. And she's like, okay. Yeah. So now, like, she's going to get back with Dan and be like, you got to do a prank. And he's like, I'm not fucking doing a prank. He's like, I don't have time for this fuck. You created this mess. You got to get yourself out of it kind of thing. And, like... Exactly. And it, it's just a mess that Roseanne created. I'm signing with Dan on this. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm kind of with Dan on this one. Because it's just like, you know what? Like, why does he have to now, like, overcompensate? Like, why does he have to pretend to like Nancy... Like, I mean, Roseanne's best friend married Dan's dad. But we, we kind of get, like, we get a fun thing. So now... So he's kind of stuck with that as family relation for, like, the rest of his life. Does he really need to deal with, like, crazy Nancy, too? <laughs> I mean, come on now. All right. So And then while all this is going on, Roseanne is telling David that he needs to, like, do something for Halloween. He can't mope around the house. And Darlene had called and said she wasn't coming home for Halloween because she got invited to a party by a boy. Like, we're, we're now at that point now where, like, Roseanne is, like, she actually, like, loves David. Like, David's, like, now part of her family. And she, like, hears this. Yeah. And, like, one part of her is shocked. But, like... She, like, Roseanne has a big defense mechanism, and she refers to, like, comedy whenever, like, something horrible happens. Yeah. So, it, like, when she hears about this, she's like, oh, my God. She's mm -hmm. like, Darlene and I are now, like, girlfriends because she confided in me with, like, a secret. Like, that's, like, her big defense mechanism, right? There. Yeah. She, like, puts up these walls. She's like, we're, like, friends. I mean, this is also the time where Darlene really starts to finally really come out of that dark place she was in for a long time. Yeah, like, goth Darlene is dying, and now, like, 
yeah. Darlene went to college. She's I don't know, starting to get a new life. She's seeing that, like, you know what? The world isn't such a great place. Like, now that I'm away from my house, my family. Yeah, she's, like, away from the house and things are way better. Yeah, I'm away from this this boy that I dated for two years who just draws horses all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor David. Like, finally moving on. Mm-hmm. Roseanne's kind of, like, keeping the secret. And she's kind of like, oh, this is, like, weird. Like, I don't want David moping around the house because Darlene's out having mm-hmm. fun. Like, a part of her feels guilty that she knows about this. So she can, she's like, David, you need to find something to do for Halloween. D- I'm confused. Uh, so are David and Darlene the same age? Or is David still in high school? Like, what's the... Okay, so, like, if Darlene and David had this plan where they could, if they got accepted into these art programs in Chicago, they would take their GED and go to college early because they wanted to get out of Lanford. Well, okay. David and his horse drawings did not get uh, accepted, but Darlene and her writing did. So Darlene took the GED and went to college. Okay, and David just decided to stay in high school. Yeah, David just stayed in high school. He's in high school drawing horses. This is like before he like runs away and lives with the Connors. Yes. And lives with Darlene. So... David's that's I guess David went to school the next day. Mm-hmm. What's the girl's name? Sally. Was that her name? Yeah, Sally girl. That's Sally girl. Finds this like really like equally weird, arty type chick, just like David. Probably there are in mm-hmm. fucking unicorns at home. <laughs> yeah, she's like she's like a nice girl. She's actually really pretty. Yeah, she had that very nineties um, aesthetic, as Tumblr would say. Remember in the nineties when like um like the t- 90s teens like longed for like a 60s and 70s look mm-hmm. but they but it also kind of like was it like, in a 90s like yeah vein that was like the looks that she had she had that yes. like alt like that like alt rock look i guess yes I don't, know. I don't know like something that like winona Ryder would wear on reality bites yeah it, it, it was totally like, like that sort of thing but you know yeah. the look we all longed for it was a very like a very sp- that specific mm-hmm. time like that week in 1993 like that look that was a very specific yeah. dated look like i don't know like i don't think you could have pulled it off like a month later a year later or a year early it, that was just like that week <laughs> it was just like a very like flowy dress very multicolored, very baggy but muted um, colors yes and like but our hair had like like Mm-hmm. Her hair and makeup was very modern, yeah. but, like, the dress is very old-fashioned. Like, it's, like, a weird look. I don't know. It's, like, hard to explain. I guess, like, you gotta find, like, what was, like, a popular early 90s magazine for, like... Sassy. Sassy. Yeah, you have to go, like, the October 1993 issue of Sassy probably had this picture in there. And that's, like, the look that the people at Roseanne, like, mm-hmm. went with for Sally. Totally. I'll have to get a screen grab. I'll have to get a screen grab because, like, it's it's very, like, you'll never see, like, if you even you went to, like, January 94, like, fashion had already moved on from yeah. this look. But it was fun. So David goes to the lunchbox with Sally, and they're, like, making posters for the Halloween dance. Mm-hmm. Right in front of Roseanne. They're, like, in her face. Yes. And they're very close, and he's, like, pulling Sally's necklace, and he's looking at it, and they're, like, I don't know, like, playing with each other's hair and stuff and getting, like, kind of, like, semi-flirty. Yeah. It's it's on purpose, though. And, it's, like, all there on purpose. Yes. And what, like, Roseanne is appalled that David's doing this right in front of her. Mm-hmm. But, like, at the same time, she's like, oh, my God, this is my fault. So she's she's not thinking that there might potentially be a prank being played on her. Like, she's... Like, potentially thinking, like, oh, shit, like, I just, like, fucked up, like, yeah, the family dynamic in my household now. Like, oh, yeah. shit, like, what did I do? What the fuck did I do? <laughs> uh, spoiler, it ends up being a prank, but, well, I mean, I'm sure you knew that. <laughs> all right, so, while all this is going on, um, this bald guy with, like, a scruffy, clothes-shaped beard comes in. And he's sitting at the, he has, like, a long, like, jacket on, like, a, like I don't know, like, a very like army green jacket on he's like sitting at the um the breakfast bar someone i i guess it's someone that roseanne's never seen before the counter and why do you keep calling it a breakfast bar she comments on his looks like like oh is, is that your halloween costume like because his head was shaved and i guess like having like a shaved shaved head in 1993 was something that just didn't happen like a fully shaved head yeah it really didn't like if you think back like no it's not like something like you'd see today. I mean, I guess the only time you ever saw it was like Bull from Night Court, maybe. Yeah, pretty much. She comments on that. 
Or some guy just out of prison from, like, the Nazis or something. Skinheads. <laughs> yes. So she comments on the guy's hair, and he pulls a gun out, and he's like, this is a holdup. And Roseanne's like, oh, this is a prank. And Jackie and Nancy are like, this is not a prank. This is not a prank. And Roseanne's going along with it. She's like, here, have my wedding ring. Here, take all my money. Here, like, take my earrings. Like, just hand him all the stuff. And he, like, runs out of the building. And Roseanne's like, all right, Jackie, that was funny. <laughs> like, uh, can I have my stuff back? And Jackie's like, no, like, that wasn't the prank. Like, this is the prank right here. And there was just, like, this mm -hmm. other guy, like, pretending to have, I don't know, like, some fucking... He ate a rat or something. He pulled like a like a stuffed rat out of his throat. Yeah, it was like, oh, I was eating your meat, and here's a rat. Like, so Roseanne starts freaking out, and that's when Dan runs in. Dan runs in with the get the the robber, and they're like, ha, oh, we got you. And Roseanne's like, okay, well, you didn't get me. She's like playing it off like real hardcore. Mm -hmm. And so they're now like behind the counter, and Roseanne's like, all right, so like now that you're here, can you like play your prank on Nancy? And Nancy just happens to be coming out of, like, the back room. And Dan's like, no, I'm not doing this. I, like, I don't like Nancy. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't stand Nancy. So. I'm not going to waste a prank on Nancy. Like, come on. It's not worth it. Yeah. And they turn around. They see Nancy. And Dan now feels like shit. And he like, goes like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so sorry, Nancy. And he, like, runs over the door. And then she opens up the door again. I don't know. She, like, comes back in for some reason. It hits him in the nose. And yeah. it actually, like, really breaks his nose. But... <laughs> yeah, like, there's blood everywhere. And it's actually really kind of nasty because he, like, falls towards, like, a bucket of loose meat. Yeah. So, I... Um, for the love of Halloween, because um, I guess Dan, a part of... A small part of him felt bad that he hurt Nancy's failing. So, like, he now... Like, him and Roseanne, like, now pretend this was the prank. <laughs> Like, ooh, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, Nancy! Oh my god, we sure got you! Yeah, like, Bye. we love you, Nancy. And she's like, oh my god, like, uh, this blood looks so real. I can't believe, like, you went all out for me. And we, we we cut back, and Dan's coming back from the emergency room. He has a little, like, Band-Aid on his nose. And he's like, oh my god, I can't believe this prank cost me, like, $800. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like an $800 ER visit. And it wasn't even a prank. Yeah. And he's like, I hope it was worth it. And Roseanne's like, it was worth it. Mm -hmm. And um, so, right, right, okay. We kind of skipped over something. So, like, right before this, um, Darlene called the Lanford lunchbox, and she's like, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I feel bad about, like, you know, ditching David this Halloween and, like, hanging out with a boy, a random boy. I'm, You know what? I think I'm going to come home. And, like, Roseanne's like, oh, my God. Like, no, like, you can't. Like, I told David to, you know. Like, it's too late. I, I told David to do something for Halloween. She's like, okay, like, well, I guess I'll, I'll come home anyways. But, like, she, R Roseanne kind of forgets about it because the whole ER visit happens, so it kind of, like, slips her mind. Yeah. So she comes home from the ER, and that's when Darlene walks in the door, and Darlene's like, surprise, I'm home. But, like, right before this happens, mm -hmm. we find um, we find Sally's, like, denim jacket is, like, hunched over the, um, like, the Connor family, like, chair or something like sitting chair yeah she's she's left her jacket and roseanne's like wait what's going on yeah and dj comes downstairs and he's like oh sally and david are downstairs like smooching like i snuck up on them and they were like kissing that's when, like when darlene walks in the door mm -hmm. and she's like i'm gonna go down and surprise i'm gonna go down and give like david a big surprise i'm home and like roseanne and david are like trying to like I mean, Roseanne and Dan are like, oh, like, you can't go downstairs. But she goes downstairs. You can't go downstairs, no. And you hear this, like, screaming. And David's like, <laughs> and uh, DJ's like, he's with that Sally girl. And Darlene races down the stairs. Yes, and you hear, like, a screaming noise. Roseanne runs down, and you see, like, Darlene strangling Sally on the bed. Mm -hmm. And Roseanne looks shook. Like, she actually is, like, for once, actually looks, like, shook. Like, yeah, she surprised. is legit like, someone's shook. playing the ultimate prank on her. And Darlene pulls the head of Sally off, and it's, like, a fake head. And she's like, I killed you, Sally. <laughs> and there's blood dripping down. There's fake blood dripping yeah. down. And then Sally jumps out of the bed. She's okay. She's like, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and Roseanne's like, wait, what the hell? And David's like, this is my idea. I wanted to feel that you set up. I wanted to feel like part of the family. And for, like, five seconds, Roseanne just wanted to, like, rip his head off. But then she's like, oh, my God. Then she grabs the do the fake Sally head and is like, we got to go take this over to Jackie's. Yeah. Because he's like, you know what? Like, Roseanne got excited. Because, like, no one has been ever, be like, been able to get her. Like, even, like, the prank earlier today with, like, the robber, she's, like, still kind of new. 
Like, it was a prank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like no one's been ever been able to get her. And someone finally got her, and it was David, the outsider. And it was, a, like, a good get. Like, this was a good prank. Like, yeah, it was, a, it was a slow build. And, it, like, it, it built on her yeah. emotions, too. So, like, it... Yeah. And it was planned out really well, and it wasn't cheesy. It wasn't, like, most of the pranks they, they do. Yes. And, and, and it's, like, for the viewing audience at home, it was presented, like naturally like we kind of experienced it the way roseanne experienced experienced it exactly because what do you like the first time you watch you're like wait is darlene what is Dar- what is happening yeah and and you know what and they kind of like trick the audience because we're so focused on the dan and nancy prank that we kind of forget that there's mm-hmm. like an actual another prank being yeah. laid out in front of us that we're like we're like standing on the rug and they're gonna pull the rug from out from underneath us yeah so, like we like forgot about that like we're more focused on dan and nancy Mm-hmm, exactly. Oh, I love this episode. This is such a good episode. Yeah, it was great. I fucking loved it. Like the the writing was great. Um, mm-hmm. it, like I I watched this and I, like I watched it and I was like, oh my god, I wanted to like watch eleven more episodes. Yeah, it, it's it's a good one. And like I just think of all the ones after this, and they're just not as good. Yeah. So I don't know. We're 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 definitely we're going out with a bang. Yeah. Like, I think the next one is the next one, like, the one where, like, Roseanne blows up her house. Yeah, the next one's where Fred and Dan pretend they're gay. And then she blow, Roseanne blows up the house. And Roseanne dresses up like Prince. And it's just... And then the one after that is the one with, like, Jerry Garcia's ghost. <laughs> yeah, the one where Jerry's born. Then the other one after that is the one with, um like, the Ab Fab girls. Darlene's yeah. baby. And, yeah, they just get, like, ridiculous after this yeah, one. Yeah, so this is, like, the last pure... Like, you have to, like, suspend some reality with the Yeah, we the got the others. last pure Roseanne Halloween right here. Halloween V. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know, but who knows? Maybe we'll get H2O yeah. Halloween 20 years later this this fall without, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see it without Roseanne, though. Yeah, it'd be weird. Low-key, low-key, after talking about this, I would love for, like, the first Halloween without Roseanne of, like, Jackie did something in her honor, like a prank in her honor. Or, like, the kid, the grandkids or something, maybe. Yeah, but I, you know what? I feel like they're gonna make us. It's gonna they're gonna do that Kevin can wait thing where like they make you forget about the dead wife like very quickly. Yeah, they're just gonna move on very quick. Justice for Aaron Hayes. That that's why I kind of like don't wanna. Still, always. I know they're gonna. Um, they, I know they're gonna turn the tides very quickly. It's like you know mm-hmm. what. We don't like Roseanne the person, but we can still like Roseanne the character. Why not? Who cares? Roseanne Connor is not Roseanne Barr. Like I, I don't know. I'm not. We're not going to get into it. This is not the podcast where we get into it. No. This is the podcast where we talk about your favorite TV series from yesteryear and then discuss it over a glass of wine. And I'm Patrick. I'm done. And I'm joined here tonight, as always, by Cat Halstead, the author. <laughs> I'll just be over here spin my Lacroix. Yeah. You fat passion you fruit flavor. Passion right. fruit flavor, people. Are you excited for next week's episode? I am. All right. So we always like to do like a special, like some kind of like animated special or like a television mm-hmm. special, something that's just like not a sitcom, not a movie, just like a one-time thing, I guess, that like it aired on TV. Like a prime time little thing. Yeah. Like a little, like, yeah. Like in the past we've done, we did the Garfield Halloween special. We did um, the Grinch. Halloween is Grinch night. Don't uh, watch that one, guys. What just, else have we done? Just pass over halloween is grinch night it's just not worth it listen to our episode about it because we kind of like we 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 discuss it and we kind of get we have like a little fun like dr seuss moments too like we talk about dr seuss yeah and we 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 said we're gonna do like a special dr seuss episode we should talk about his life we haven't done it (laughs) maybe one day oh my god could you imagine somebody went back and listened to our whole back catalog and broke down a list of everything we've said we would do and we haven't that'd be scary (laughs) You know what? I have a I have a proposition to our fans out there. Someone's gonna go through, make a list of all the things we said we we're gonna do and have not yet done, and tweet a, tweet them to us. Actually, you can't because it's gonna be too long. <laughs> Send us an email. What's our email address? I, I don't remember. Um, how about, all right? Tweet us at Very Podcast. And then we'll reply to you. We'll give you like an email address to send it to. Yeah. Or just leave us like a YouTube comment, maybe, and we'll find it. Yes. Reach out to us somehow, and I don't know. We'll we'll give you like a message on Facebook. Yeah, and we'll we'll find a way to link up with you and send us send us a list. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture of it. Screenshot it. DM it to us. Okay, so what are we doing next? All right. 
Um, hold on. I, I got to look up the actual name of it because I can't remember the name of it. Okay. It's called um, mm. The Flintstones Meet Rockula and Frankenstone. Yes. <laughs> it's like a 1979, 1980-ish TV special that was on, yes. I don't know, ABC or something. Well, we'll, we'll get into it in more detail. We'll figure it out. I have yet to actually watch it. I haven't watched it yet either. I put a different Flintstones Halloween episode thing on today for accident, so... Yeah, I guess there's multiples, so I don't know. Maybe we'll have something else to do next year. Oh, yeah, there's multiples. I found them on the Boomerang app, so... And this is not our new tradition. Uh, we'll announce that ne in the next no. episode. Yes, the next episode we will tell you what the new tradition is if you haven't figured it out, or it's not in the episode before this. I think it is. Um... It, we definitely have teased it. I definitely teased it earlier in the episode. I said the name of the show. Mm -hmm. So go back and yes. listen to it. And I don't know. Tweet us if you think. We, I, you know, Heather's going to like say this like a bunch of things that she thinks it is. And she's going to be wrong. Oh, my gosh. She's going to be like, she's going to be like, is it? Are you guys going to do like Dateline Halloween episodes <laughs> like, about like horrific murders? Like, what was it? I teased <laughs> that I was posting something on YouTube and it's like a daily recap of all 15 seasons of <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> we are. I was like, no, no, we have. A, it was the first episode of Watch with Me. Watch with Cat. We have like a whole like ER series eventually coming soon. Hopefully in 2019. Yes, yeah. eventually. We we, I don't know, we 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 promise a lot. We don't deliver. We have lives outside of this podcast that keep us busy because we have to make money. Yeah, I work two jobs and go to school and do this and another podcast and actually two other podcasts. So. <laughs> Any last, like, hot minute thoughts on Flintstones meet Rockler and Frankenstone that you want to get out? Uh, no, because I haven't watched it yet. Me neither. Um, if you want to watch it, where can you find it? It's on you Daily Motion. We saw it on Daily Motion, right? You saw it on Daily Motion. I have it on the Boomerang app. I feel like there's five people in the world that have Boomerang. So. <laughs> Let's be real. And I'm probably one of them. Uh, but you, if you want to watch it, you want to watch it along with us? You want to watch with us? Uh, you can just go to dailymotion.com. Actually, just go to Google, right? The Flintstones meet Rock and Frankenstone. There's like three versions of it on Daily Motion. Pick one. Yeah. Pick the one that looks the best to you. Watch it. And, I don't know, come back a few days later and see what we have to say about it. See what we have to say about our favorite Stone Age family. Yeah. Or maybe I should just do a watch with Kat and post it to YouTube. No, we're going to do a very special podcast on it. All right. Where can you follow us, Kat Health of the author? Where can uh, you, follow you can follow us on Twitter at a very special podcast. Or no, it's at. Oh, wow. Okay. You're going to have to edit that one out. All right. Follow us on Twitter at very podcast. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at a very special podcast. Do not accept imitations. Boys, I still have the dossier. Uh, a very special podcast.com, Tumblr is a very special podcast, saltyrockmedia.com, and YouTube, you just look up a very special podcast. Or just go on Google and just write a very special podcast, and like all our stuff pops up. So Hopefully, it's all of us. It does, I've looked. <laughs> I've okay. looked a few times. All right, and as always, bye! Watch the skies. <laughs>